What's up everyone? Welcome to another video. I'm excited. One, because I'm moving soon. That's really exciting, so I should be doing some behind the scenes stuff on that. And two, today we're gonna be checking out a time stop speed ramp effect. Now, I wanted to do this effect on something that didn't seem possible by using all clips shot in 24 FPS. So the common idea is that you can't slow down 24 FPS and you're wrong, you can. You just have to use optical flow within Premiere Pro. Now it's pretty sick and it even allows you to slow things down to 1%. 1%, I said that right. So let's jump on into what it looks like, but today's video would not be possible without my friends at Skillshare. I know, it was pretty cool. That was all 24 FPS and it still looked pretty sick. So hit that like button, please, because it seriously helps out the channel and let me know what you think down below. So how do we do this effect? Well, in simplest terms, this is all you have to do. Right click on your video, click speed and duration, set it to 1%, drag all these lines around all over the place, make sure it's optical flow and render it out. You're done. That's the quick and easy version, but I'm gonna show you a little bit in depth tutorial on how to use it and what works and what doesn't work. But first, let's hear from today's sponsor. So what is Skillshare? Well, it's an online community where you can learn just about anything and everything to fuel your curiosity and creativity. And it's all kind of cool because you learn something. At less than $10 a month, I think this is something that everyone should try out and the first 500 to click the link in the description down below will actually get two free months of Skillshare for free. So what do I want to learn today? Well, Skillshare makes it pretty easy. Once you create an account, you can see all of the recommended for you videos. And it's pretty cool because it's tailored to what you like. And this is a video from Oliver Astrologo that shows you how to transform your footage into evocative travel stories. What are you waiting for? This is the best thing to do when you're sitting at home and you have nothing else to do. So pick up Skillshare, click the link in the description down below. First 500, get two months free. Let's get on with the tutorial. All right, so now we're in Premiere and let me explain to you how this effect works. Optical flow basically blends the clips together and it basically paints frame to frame. So if you look as I go back and forth between these two frames, what optical flow is going to do is it's going to actually paint all of this in between each frame and slow it down quite a bit. So in order to do that, all you have to do is pretty much right click speed and duration and then select time interpolation, optical flow. Now you have optical flow enabled. So anytime you change the speed of this, say to 20%, you'll see that it starts jumping back and forth and it doesn't really look that good because in order to see optical flow, you have to click I at the beginning and O at the end of a clip you want optical flow on and go to sequence render into out. That will actually render in and out on optical flow because now you can see as we scrub through these frames, it's not jumping anymore. It's actually smooth, slow motion. So let me show you real quick what works with optical flow and what doesn't. And keep in mind, this is 24 FPS. This is what it looks like without optical flow. And this is what it looks like with optical flow. So it's a pretty powerful tool. So let's restart and show you how to do some speed ramp. So with this effect, it's not going to work when there's a lot of motion. So for example, if you have something on the edge of your screen that jumps quite a bit of frames, it's actually going to start tearing and not look the best. So you wanna try to find a section on your clip where there's not much motion, and this looks good right about here, right after she blinks. So all I'm gonna do is right click on the FX button down here and go to time remapping and select speed. Now we have a area that we can start to manipulate the speed ramp. So if you hold control, or option on your Mac, you can 
get a plus sign and this little line right here if you drag it up it'll increase the speed and if you drag it down it'll decrease the speed so what we want to do is hold control or option make a selection right there and then we're just going to drag the right half down to you guessed it one percent and now you'll see that we have a before and after once we go to one percent so with that, you also have this little line right here. If you click on that line in the middle and drag it to the right, it'll actually drag your ramp out. So you can start to get a smooth ramp down to that speed ramp. And if you click these little lines in the middle, you can drag them to the right and also make a little bezier on your speed ramp just so it smooths out a little bit more. So now we have it down to 1% and it looks like crap nothing's going on nothing's moving as you can see and that's because we have to right click on it make sure optical flow is selected and then once it is selected under time interpolation set an in point by clicking i and scrub all the way down your timeline and then set an out point by clicking o and then go to sequence render into out so now let's play this back and check it out as you can see, it slows it down and check out this motion. Even his shirt is moving nice and smoothly. Right now we have no tearing. Well, right here, did you see that? So right here where there's a little um, flash or something, where that light was, sometimes optical flow doesn't work and you'll get some tearing like this. Now it's not the end of the world because this effect works great in certain scenarios. And you're gonna have to play around with your clips. And what I like to do is typically drag a clip on and export the entire thing with optical flow and look at what frames work the best. Typically when there's not a lot of motion, it works great. So now all you have to do is pick a point that you would like to speed back up, hold control or option on a Mac, and then drag your right half of that line up to 100%. Now if you hold shift, it'll snap it to every five and you're up to 100%. Just drag that line out again and then set an in point and an out point, in point by I, out point by clicking O or dragging your in and out points and then sequence render into out. So now we have this slow motion and as soon as it's done, it will speed back up to normal speed. And keep in mind, this is in fact a 24 FPS clip. If I view the clip, you can see the frame rate is 24. So this is pretty cool. So I'm gonna show you one more example and hopefully we can kind of see what works with it and what doesn't work with it. So this clip right here is of a skier going all crazy. So firstly, in the example in the beginning, I showed you what it looks like right here on the jump. And you'll notice on the jump, there's not a lot of motion happening besides these ski poles, but I chose to slow it down right here when the ski poles weren't moving that much. So a great way to test your clip to see if it's even gonna work is just right click speed and duration, set your speed to 1% and change this to optical flow. And then you're gonna scrub through your clip to see a point that you want to test. So say I wanna test this point, let's click I, and then let's scrub forward to the point that I wanna test it to right there and click O. And all I have to do is go to sequence render into out. All right, so now it has rendered and we can start to see what is going to work and what isn't going to work. So for example, if we full screen this, you'll see that right here, we're getting some tearing in between his pole. And that isn't gonna work the best. But if we fast forward a little bit, notice how once his pole is in the snow, that it starts to work a little bit better. Now this is 1%. You can see minor tearing, but this is a good point because we'll start to see that this area may work best for the slow motion. Now you're gonna have to test this on your clips and find out what's going to work. But as you see, this was shot in 24 and we have extremely, extremely slow, slow motion. This is a great example of how it works. So for this clip, I know that it works when his pole is in the snow. So let's do this. Let's reset this to 100% and make a speed ramp out of it. We have it at 100%. So what I'm gonna do is right click on FX, go to time remapping and speed. So I know that right when his pole is in the snow, right about there, it works. So I'm gonna hit control or option on a Mac and make a point. I'm gonna scrub forward and I think that's good right about there and make another point. Now I'm gonna drag this down to all the way down to 1%. You'll notice that it extended your clip and it looks like that. 
So one tip I typically like to do is always drag to the right. So if I drag my first line to the right, you'll see that I create a little speed ramp. And if I drag my second line to the right as well, you'll see that I created another speed ramp. And now I can drag this left line to the left to shorten that speed ramp if I need to. That will preserve my in and out point. So now I have a speed ramp that cuts all the way down to 1%, and then it's gonna speed back up right there. So let's click I before that and O after after that and go to sequence render into out so I can see what that looks like. So cool, it slowed down perfectly at 24 FPS all the way down to 1% and it comes back up. And again, you can repeat this process as many times as you want. For example, in the beginning, I chose to speed ramp this section right here. Now keep in mind, if there is a lot of motion, it will not work. As you saw in the beginning, when there is motion between objects, it tends to be a little glitchy. So keep that in mind and hopefully you can make something dope like the intro video. But as you can see in the intro video, check this out. Let's go frame by frame on this Rubik's Cube to show you something. So frame by frame, this is how far you can see the Rubik's Cube is jumping in between frames. But as soon as I go down to 1%, optical flow starts to take into account for these frames and it starts to actually paint these frames together. And you can start to see some artifacting in there, but if you play around with it, I guarantee that you're gonna get an effect that looks great for you. Well, that's all I have time for today. Hopefully you guys learned something, and if you did, please let me know down below. Hit that like button if you learned something, and if you're new, consider subscribing, because I'm gonna be making some more stuff in the future. And as always, I'll see you guys next time.